It's often said that Animal Crossing New Horizons is the weakest entry in the series in terms of dialogue, and I'd admit I'd have to agree with that. However, a lot of the more unseen dialogue isn't found by just talking to your villagers randomly, it's hidden under situational circumstances that you won't find all too often. Which is to say that while you may have heard a peppy villager talk about Maglev Mike for the 80th time, you also may have never heard the same villager comment on various artworks in the museum because you just don't find them in that circumstance very often. So today's goal is to dig deep and find the weird situational dialogue that most players might not have seen before. I'll be looking to see what sort of special dialogue Nintendo has for villagers and for special NPCs that account for some of the weirder circumstances that can happen in the game. Let's get started. Usually the first NPC you talk to every day is Isabel. She's notorious for giving announcements that basically boil down to... Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! But, under the right circumstances, she actually can give you some dialogue that you've probably never seen before. It was brought to my attention that if you start a new character on your island when the fireworks are going on, then you get a bit of dialogue from Isabel where she introduces herself in these unusual circumstances of her not being inside of resident services. This is the only time that we see her outside of the office, so I don't think this can happen with any other holidays or events. And it's kind of funny how they had to write dialogue to account for this very specific situation, but that's essentially the theme of the whole video. So let's see some other weird circumstances. Sticking close to resident services, the amiibo functionality in this game using the Nook Stop allows you to invite villagers to your campsite by scanning either their amiibo figure or their amiibo card. While this is intended for regular villagers, you can also scan in special NPCs as well. They won't move into your campsite, but they all have dialogue that stays in tune to their character, graciously denying your offer to camp out. Mabel will say that she has her claws full. Isabel is flattered, but denies your request regardless. Tommy is too busy at work, and Red thinks that you're the cops. Tom Nook also goofs on you by saying, hey dumbass, I'm right next to you. What happens when you try to scan an amiibo of an NPC that isn't in the game? Ha, ah, classic Nintendo. Something that was also pointed out to me was that if you hold a celebration for a completed project that happens to be very close to another building, Tom Nook will acknowledge how cramped the party is. This is especially rare, in my opinion, for a couple of reasons. A, why the hell would you build a project so close to another one? And B, who even does the celebrations for their projects anyway? The museum generates quite a bit of situational dialogue that you've probably never seen before as well. This is quite easy to understand, since the writers had to account for all the different villager personalities looking at all the different displays that they have in the museum. For example, villagers have unique dialogue for every single exhibit in the art section of your museum. When you take into account how rare it is to see them there in the first place, you can imagine that there's a lot of things that your villagers have to say that you've probably never seen before. So, take every piece of art in there and multiply it by the eight different personalities and you get... a lot of dialogue. So much so that it would take forever for me to film all of it, but I was linked to a handy website that actually extracts all of the dialogue from this game and conveniently sorts it out. If we find all the different personalities and open their respective comments whilst they're watching art, you can see a list of all the different things that they have to say. I'll link the website in the description and in the pinned comment below as well. So yeah, there's a lot of dialogue in the museum that you haven't seen yet since the circumstances to see them are so rare. We're not done with the museum yet though. Blathers has some stuff to say as well that you would have to be lucky to see by random chance. If you were to complete two exhibits in one fell donation, then he has unique dialogue for that situation. For example, donating the last fish and the last bug that you need at the same time will prompt the following dialogue. While this has been certainly done by people before, it's very likely that many of you haven't seen it before. 
Another thing that many of you might not have seen before is what Blathers has to say once you actually finish the museum. Considering the task that is completing the museum, and the fact that you can only see it a maximum of one time per island, means that it's quite unlikely to have been seen by most people. Our boy Wisp has a couple of things to say that would certainly classify as uncommon. Being that you need a net to catch his spirit pieces after you spook him, he will actually make a comment telling you if you don't have a net in your inventory. Need a net to catch them. Huh, seems like you don't have a net. Well, maybe just make some, a quick one using some of those branches lying around. Seeing as how most people always carry a net with them at all times, it's probably something many of you haven't seen before. There's also a series of comments that Wisp makes if you decide to hold his spirit pieces hostage after collecting them all. He gets progressively more and more demanding for you to hand them over until eventually he just gets stuck in a loop trying to threaten you. Not gonna return them. You need to give me those or else. And then he just keeps repeating the or else, I'm pretty sure, from here. Not gonna return them. Or else. Literally, you could just do this all day. You're gonna get the same thing. Now, onto Nook's Cranny. Something interesting happens when you stay in the store past closing time. Timmy, or Tommy, I guess, will basically give you the boot once the clock strikes 10 p.m. If you're not a night owl, then this might be new to you. But what's weird is that the Able Sisters do not do the same. They close an hour earlier at 9 p.m., but they will let you stay in the shop for as long as you want, only closing up for the night once you leave. I was looking to see what their version of the get the hell out dialogue would be, but apparently they don't mind when a customer walks in two minutes before closing. Dickhead. The bulk of the dialogue in this game comes through your villagers. When presented with certain situations, they can have some comments about things that you might not have seen before. For example, did you know that villagers will comment on their own picture when they see it outside? <laughs> Narcissism. They will also straight up refuse bells if you give it to them, as was pointed out to me while streaming. Hey, do you mean to give me money? Yeah, pretty deliberate act, honestly. I've never tried to do that before, so I had no idea. Another person pointed out to me that you will get some unique dialogue if you wrap the same clothes that they're wearing and give it to them as a gift. Along similar lines to this, there are various clothing sets in the game that let you dress up as a certain animal. If you were to dress completely up in a cat outfit, for example, and talk to a cat villager, they have a small chance to comment on it. That's it. That's it right there. That's what I've been trying to do this entire freaking time, was get them to say, you are dressed like me today. Stumbling upon this by accident would be quite the coincidence. If you like to live dangerously, you might have found yourself in the dreadful situation of being chased by a hive of bees. If you interrupt your frantic scramble to speak with one of your villagers, they will talk to you in a panic. Thanks for the help! Previously, we've touched on the topic of sharing birthdays with your villagers. I did a whole video about the rarest events in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and one of the rarer things that can happen to you is the event of sharing your birthday with another villager. The odds are about 1 in 50 to share your birthday with a villager on your island, so if you met the criteria, then you should see some dialogue from your birthday twin commenting on the rarity of that situation. There is more birthday-related dialogue, though. Sadly, it was revealed in the same video that Nintendo didn't write dialogue if you share a birthday with two villagers on your island, probably due to the absurd chance that it would ever occur, but I was sent this bit of dialogue on Twitter where villagers will have specific dialogue if your birthday has, quote, matching numbers. Realistically, this means that you can only get this dialogue if your birthday is something like January 1st, February 22nd, March 3rd, and so on. So if I'm understanding this right, this means that the chances of seeing this dialogue is pretty rare as well. Add to the fact that the only example I've ever seen of this is from Poppy, a lazy villager. I'm not sure if other villager personalities have this to say as well, so if you know, then post in the comments. Moving on. You may have seen this side-scrolling text happen before, and what it basically means is that you changed your wallpaper from one that did not have windows to one that did. And since you can't hang items where your windows would be, the game puts the stuff that was hanging right there where the windows were in storage. But what if your storage is full? Then you get a dialog box preventing you from changing out the wall at all. Not all that remarkable, but certainly quite unlikely to happen at random. I suppose the truly rarest dialogue in the game is the dialogue that you can't even see at all. I covered a feature in this game that was cut during development that allows for villagers to visit your house. 
While this feature has been in most Animal Crossing games previously, it was not fully implemented in Animal Crossing New Horizons. The reason that we know this is because there is text written in this game where villagers will comment on the inside of your house. You can interact with furniture just the same as when you visit them and even invite over multiple villagers. It's quite clear that this feature was never fleshed out completely, but cool to see that they never removed it completely. Now, re-add it to the game, cowards. Anyways, this game is rife with dialogue, and yes, it is pretty poor in comparison to its predecessors in that regard, but it's certainly not a lack of dialogue in my opinion, it's rather a lack in the ways that we see it. So much text in this game is hidden behind absurd predicaments that will rarely ever see the light of day. If more effort was focused on making charming, engaging speech rather than pointless minutiae, I think that this game would be a lot better. However, it's also up to us to dig a lot deeper before we say that this game has no dialogue. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I've recorded a lot of this video on my Twitch channel, so go give me a follow over there. I'm live 6 days a week at 2pm Pacific, 5pm Eastern. Also, if you liked this video, you might enjoy the two videos that I have detailing a lot of the more unlikely events that happen in this game on a broader level rather than just focusing on dialogue. So check those out as well, and thank you so much for watching as always. Thank you for the support on the channel, you all mean a lot to me, and I will continue to do my best on the channel. I appreciate it, and have a good rest of your days.